Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm Mike Myers. I'm from Trail of Bits. Um, I'm going to describe some of the extensions that we developed over the last several months at Trail of Bits. Um, I didn't personally do the development. I'm sort of a uh, engineer manager, so anything I say, uh, please uh, don't um, don't take it for uh, you know the ultimate reference. Please uh, ask questions, and I will try to direct them to the engineers that know best. Okay, so for my own benefit, I had to start with what are extensions? Um, and the best answer for that is that they're a way to extend or override the functionality of OS Query. And there's a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a confusion because plugins and extensions are uh, somewhat related. But basically, in an extension, you run as a separate process. A lot of the other uh, talks have already kind of gone over this, but um, the, uh, the important thing to know is that uh, they run a uh, IPC mechanism, or RPC mechanism called Thrift, and um, there's a little bit of a uh, vocabulary to get out of the way here, but the extensions can implement a plugin, so uh, a plugin can be in an extension, but not vice versa. So. Um, maybe one, one recommendation for OS Query is that uh, the documentation could clear this up because I had to uh, read you know, several times to get it straight myself, but <laughs> the, uh, the extensions are what we're here to talk about. Plugins are unrelated. So I drew myself a little napkin diagram of uh, what extensions are and how to use them. So uh, this is the OS Query core on the left. And this is what we're doing over here on the right. And uh, you can have multiple extensions, and then they'll all talk over the same Thrift protocol. So as I understand it, Thrift is like a one-to-many broadcast protocol. And that's something that we'll get back to. For um, completeness sake, there's a third way to load an extension at demand time. But that was a little more complicated, so I didn't bother to feature it on this slide here. Uh, but generally, uh, all you need to know is that there's a Unix domain socket, and uh, they're using that to communicate locally on the machine. So more from a developer standpoint, I wanted to go, kind of go over the how. And I wanted to simplify it so that it seems a little more easy, because I think um, it would be great if more people were trying to do extensions. And I think it's an approachable developer topic. You can do like as your first experience with OS Query, so you don't have to actually develop in core and worry about changing and breaking things there. But um, the documentation could be better. So uh, there are examples. There's a great examples, uh, example in the examples directory. And uh, this was like high level pseudocode that I just kind of put together based on what I was seeing. This is assuming you're doing in C++. But you can also develop in Python. And I expected more people to be trying things in Python. But I think maybe one of the reasons why uh, a lot of people aren't really aware, uh, as aware of the Python support in OS Query, is that the documentation didn't exist in the read the docs document. It was kind of off in this other source. And um, it's very readable, but it just wasn't where you think it would be. So you read the extensions documentation, and then you realize, oh, there's also Python support. Like, that's not as scary. I could be doing that. And it would make a lot of sense to do sort of prototyping in Python. And maybe, um, you know, because Python is a prototyping friendly language. And once you get your proof of concept idea out there and prove that it has some merit and works, then maybe you can find some C engineers and they could uh, create the C version if you need it to be higher performance or whatever. So if you go to this GitHub address, you'll see it has like 100 stars. So that kind of means that like not too many people have discovered that yet, even though like OS Query itself has 12,000 stars. So that's great, but clearly a minority of people that have discovered OS Query are aware that they could be writing pretty quick Python extensions with just a few steps. And again, you can't just copy paste this into you know, your editor, but this is the high level just to make it less scary, like, oh, it's only a few steps, and then you could be running. So again, um, those aren't even the same, those aren't, aren't even the only two options. You could also write in Go language. So over at the Collide GitHub, which is another location, 
uh, also not linked from the, right, the main document, but you can work and go if that's your thing. And uh, so just to continue the theme here, this is like the friendly, like you can do this in five steps. Like you can write a Go language extension if you want. And it's pretty well documented, so um, following the, the link. So now that we have a basic understanding of what extensions are, uh, why are they interesting? Like why do I want to talk for 20 minutes about this? And uh, I think the answer is that we, we believe that extensions are an ideal place for experimentation. So yes, you, you could fork OS Query and do whatever you wanted, but Facebook works really hard on OS Query Core, and there's a lot of people out there contributing to it. And you know, Facebook is signing the packages. So you don't want to lose that by uh, creating a fork and trying to keep it up to date with the master or the main. <coughs> Instead, we should benefit from the work that goes into that um, and do our things in extensions. So what can we do in extensions? Well, uh, we can do quote unquote dangerous features, features that uh, might be a little out of the uh, ordinary or try things that uh, wouldn't be accepted, but we can feel it out and see how it works uh, without crashing OS query you know, main. And uh, we're under a little bit less of the watchdog effect. So if things take a little longer or a little bit more resources, then we're not gonna get automatically smacked. We can develop with autonomy, which means we don't have to really go and seek approval or worry about how long a thing takes to upstream. We'll just try our idea out and um, then you can invoke it from OS Query. And if you want to stay up to date or if you want to run a little bit behind, it doesn't matter. Your version of OS Query should work because the extensions interface is relatively stable. We haven't run into any issues with uh, your version mismatch or anything like that. So I crossed out the last thing because this is an advantage of doing work in extensions and some people do want to protect their secret sauce ideas and their extensions, but at Trail of Bits, we would rather we do it open source, and we usually encourage people that come to us with ideas to develop or to, to work with us to develop it in an open source manner. I just think that there's a mutual benefit for everyone to do it that way. So it's not, it's not like encouraging a charitable donation of your IP. It's more about getting the mutual benefit that open source development represents in our, in our, in our view. So, besides uh, the really obvious or maybe unstated uh, advantages of, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if anyone has seen that movie with Mel Brooks. So, <laughs> clearly there were probably like 15 commandments in OS Query, but we dropped one of the tablets. So, <laughs> there's 10 or 6, anyway. Um, <laughs> but, so, I think uh, being efficient being high performance and stable, things that Teddy was talking about doing, those are all guiding principles and maybe they even go on set. But uh, this list, it represents some of the things that are allowed or not allowed. And I guess it was documented in writing. Um, I, I feel like I, I kind of pulled this list out of my head from recollection. I hope I'm not making anything up on this list, but I, I cross-checked it with a couple of the veterans OS Query developers and they, they said that these are the things that they are trying to maintain as like a community community tradition. So these are the principles. And um, so of course, we broke all of them in extensions to see what would happen. <laughs> but going through, uh, the idea is that people will be loath to adopt OS Query if it were to not do these things or to break these rules, right? So these are the scary things that OS Query doesn't want to be doing. So I know I uh, created this slide before realizing that I'd be giving my talk in a pitch black room where you can't really write down anything. But um, you probably, it's probably an easy exercise, right? Because um, everyone's had an idea that they threw in a drawer because they knew it violated one of the principles. And probably if you develop OS query for a customer or a manager or a user, you've heard some requests where you think, oh no, we can't do that, it doesn't belong in OS query. The newcomers usually have a great idea for what OS Query is before they actually know what it is. So their, their naivete is, is very, um, it's a very good creative uh, process. Um, 
but uh, maybe you already wrote something and then it got rejected, so I'm sorry if I brought up a painful memory. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you have an idea, hold on to it and maybe bring it to the workshop after the, after the talks today because it would be great to like, go back to those, those uh, you know, you can do it slides and with your idea, like try to prototype something in your, you know, your language of choice and we would try to work with you and help you out. Um, or not, or hold on to it, you know, um, or just take it home and think about it and, and maybe later on we'll talk about how you can uh, submit it to our, our repo. So uh, the title of my talk is the Skunk Works Project. The original Skunk Works was, uh, it was an R&D incubator at Lockheed Martin in Los Angeles, um, which is where I, I'm living right now. And uh, they, the engineers there um, in like the 50s and 60s, they, am I getting a call on the page right here? All right, so, I don't know, could someone get this? I don't know. All right, so uh, the, um, the Skunk Works was uh, named because of like a thick gas of spy plane paint fumes that were coming out of their hangar. And we're not huffing any paint fumes, we're just writing C++. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's pretty wild, I mean, yeah. Uh, the idea is that, you know, these, these engineers were able to operate uh, with autonomy outside of the bureaucracy of approvals and all of the things that would prevent innovation at a company like Lockheed Martin. Um, and because of that, they came up with these great ideas like the U-2 spy plane. And uh, that's now in a hangar in, in, out in Dallas, Virginia. If, if you've been out there, you can take a look. This skunk guy, was, uh, he's on the tail wing, or the, the fin of the plane, I don't know what that's called. Um, but yeah, so I thought it was a cool talk name, and then someone else apparently already has a whole repo at Netflix just called this. So I guess um, we're not the first or even the third, but that, it's, a, it's a cool idea. I like to uh, pretend that we're you know making spy planes. So, the first extension that we uh, worked on. And uh, down on the left here, I have our sponsors that sponsor the development of each one of these. I wanted to give them a shout out, even if they're not here today. Uh, but we started with uh, an NTFS metadata extension. And um, the reason why this is an extension is because it's based on an open source library, a third party library uh, called the Sleuth Kit. And if anyone's familiar with that, it's, uh, it's a really great forensics um, set of routines that you can use to dig down into metadata on the file system and um, open NTFS disk images and, and find little bits and fragments and, and evidence of things that malware might have left or an attacker might have left. So, so what we did with this is uh, we can find out where the malware that might have been there just cleaned up after itself or tried to alter file timestamps, but you know it forgot to uh, get down to the low-level timestamps that are also in, in, the, in the file system. So. Uh, even though I think OS Query Core can tell you the timestamps, it's using a, sort of a user-facing timestamp, whereas the file system has like eight or nine other, other timestamps uh, for that entry at a sort of lower level struct. And if you can get down to that, you can find um, the uh, mismatch between the two, usually indicating that the file timestamp has been uh, tampered with. So it's usually a, a step that forensic analysts will want to look into and having the ability to do it with OS Query gives them something that they lack that they can like, really quickly deploy. So whereas there are tools that do this, um, more robust commercial tools, this is giving them something that they already have deployed and they can just put an extension in. Um, and it's also a very user-friendly interface because OS Query you know, interactive shell is very easy to use. So, for each of these, we actually have a blog post on our blog, and uh, if you go to the Trail Bits blog, you can get a good rundown of what the schema is. The screenshots here are just meant to kind of give you an idea of the kind of data we're getting out of it. The next extension that we wanted to highlight was um, Google Santa, if you're not familiar with that, is it's an application whitelist and blacklist enforcement agent for Mac OS, and um, it uses a sync server to uh, kind of the same way OS Query does, to pull down what it should, uh, what its configuration should be. But we thought, well, why have a separate sync server? We already have OS Query, and um, what if OS Query had the ability to tell you those rules, but also pass along new rules to the Santa agent to enforce? And the way that um, 
Alessandro managed to do that was to go into OS Query Core and submit a pull request to allow what we call writable tables. So giving the ability to allow an extension to opt in to the ability to insert as well as to like read. So not just the SQL select statement, but the SQL insert statement or delete statement. And then that gives us the ability to, in an extension only, um, add a rule to the same file if we like. So it uh, opens up sort of the ability to manage the endpoint security controls. And um, that PR is still in, you know, waiting, but uh, it enables uh, in a, sort of a new market segment for OS Query. And, then, and this is an, ex you know, it's an experimental thing. And uh, we want to see how well that works. So uh, the next extension that we made that leverages that concept is to do the same thing, but instead of for Santa, just for OS firewalls. So all operating systems have host-based firewalls, and they're, they're functionally overlapping in most of the abilities that they expose. But they all have their own management interface. And uh, most, most of the time, there's only a couple different primitives that the admin is really interested in using. They want to block things, you know? They want to block hosts. They want to block ports. And that's something that they, that they want to do uh, with not a lot of, they don't want to have four different tools to do it. So what if OS query was there and it was a simple SQL statement to check the rules, make sure everyone was in compliance, uh, and then fix the ones that weren't? So you know, with the with the writable extensions, or the writable table extensions that we had in that PR, you can not only check the rules but also add new ones or delete ones. And uh, when you don't have that support and you're just using OS Query Core uh, as it is today, you, you still have the read support. It's just the the ability to update won't work. But it fails you know it fails gracefully. But just checking the the firewall status is is useful. And uh, Airbnb is, is happy to, you know, be our, our acceptance testing and and uh, initial sort of pilot of this idea. So we're not naive. We know entire businesses have been built around firewall management. So we knew that the best approach, like to do something like this, would be to start small and just constrain ourselves to support the most common operations and. Uh, I don't even know all the things a firewall can do. There, you know, it could be forwarding and IP tables could, is, is probably, uh, you know, uh, Turing complete language, I don't know. But um, we thought, like, there's a lot of value here on just doing the simple things. And the next extension is one that we haven't released yet, but uh, is um, one that Alessandro did in his own time. So uh, actually I actually saw this came up in a talk yesterday by uh, Scott Lundgren. He's here. Uh, yeah, it was a good talk, but um, same idea actually. Uh, System U Texas, um, mutants on Windows. Uh, mal malware uses this as an infection marker, and uh, they don't all do it, but it's kind of surprisingly common how lazy malware authors are, that they continue to use a kind of a well-known technique to um, communicate between processes on the host. So uh, they use uh, static sometimes names of mutexes that you can find uh, as a indicator. So if you have a source of threat intelligence that can give you what the latest malware is using in terms of mutex names, and then you can search for them. And if you have a table that can also write a mutex like this one, then you can vaccinate yourself, so, you know, so to speak by claiming that mutex before the malware ever gets there. And that's a, you know, a technique from, that's been in use for, for years now, but uh, it's effective and it's easy. So, uh, so we, we took a stab at this and the, uh, one of the challenges is that, and we'll talk about this in the next couple slides, but SQL tables are flat and the objects in Windows as an idea, they're hierarchical and you have to, kind of flatten that hierarchical view or add a lot of fields to allow for the custom data types that a, each object can have. And um, that translation is, you know, it's not one-to-one, -one. It's, it's you have to creatively solve that problem. 
in order to fit the, the model of a SQL table. But if you constrain yourself to doing something, the, the one, one or two things of value, then you can definitely do it. So an interesting other thing about mutexes, something I just became aware of this week, is that apparently the Edge browser stores information about your actual browsing activity as named mutexes. So there's actually an incident response potential there, but there's also a bit of a, a user data concern. And um, maybe that's another reason why this would be an extension and not you know, upstreamed into main. If, if it turns out that your browsing activity is stored in the, in the object database in Windows, then maybe we'd want to kind of treat that as a special side thing instead of um, an OS, a main you know, table in OS query. And because you know, we started to develop a few extensions, then um, there started to be a concern that there would be some overhead with all of the thrift API activity. So one of the goals was, or for us was, how can we combine extensions into one and just have one extension communicating with one OS query process, avoid some of that overhead. Um, and so there's a pull request out from us here, which looks like it might be accepted eventually soon. Um, and we're pretty excited about that, but you just have to call a new API, an EX version of an existing API. So it should be like kind of a drop-in update for your extension. And then with some CMake magic that Alessandro put in, then we can combine into one executable. And uh, you get fewer processes running, obviously. It's good for uh, reading the process list, but also uh, it avoids some of the, the chatty Rift API talk that multiple extensions would, 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 would uh, induce. And um, we're hoping that the Collide Launcher will pick up support for that or that they would, you know, adopt it. I think we've, we've had that discussion with Mike and he, he seemed excited. So who else is creating extensions? It's not just trail bits, right? Well, um, we know that through word of mouth, I guess, Facebook has a collection of extensions internally. Um, that implement really cool proprietary detection strategies, but we didn't, haven't seen them because that's proprietary. Um, <laughs> Collide, has, <laughs> Collide has helped uh, with submitting a, a bridge to Golang, which I mentioned earlier. Um, and then they also bundle some things with Launcher. If you're a customer of Collide, you get to enjoy those. And um, there's a couple other companies that have uh, introduced extensions that do a lot of event-driven uh, data gathering, and they look great. They also include a kernel driver, so I mean that's even more scary than the extensions that we wrote, right? <laughs> but I mean, uh, they seem to be really robust. I haven't tested them yet. Uh, I know that um, it's great to see like a diversity of uh, of models, business models um, on extensions, and I mean in the ex in the spirit of OS Query's open source nature, we want to see uh, as many you know, extensions out there as, as we can. And uh, we have a repository where uh, I think we're the only contributor to open source OS query extensions um, without like a product to sell except our engineering services. And, um, you know, we don't have a freemium model or anything. What you get on the, on the repo is, is what everyone sees or what everyone gets. But uh, ideally we would, we would feature or accept submissions of the open source community's ideas, and you know, if you make a, you know, a pull request and with an extension that you've written, that we would help you with that and um, feature it if it's a cool idea. So uh, this sort of relates to an earlier talk about what is the vision for OS Query, and um, we're not really deciding that, but uh, if you listen to what requests we get, um, they're moving sort of on two directions on the timeline of of incident response. So uh, a simplified view of attack is that um, you have sort of a prevention phase and then a detection phase and then maybe a response cleanup phase. Or if you're doing forensics, maybe you're in law enforcement or maybe you are rent attribution or something. Um, maybe you're looking for uh, clues or usually um, <coughs> things, things are pretty much uh, focused in the middle here. So that's green. The yellow areas are areas where Maybe there's a little uncertainty, like maybe OS query is appropriate for that, or, or maybe, maybe we're stretching it to fit that. Maybe that's just a need 
maybe people like OS Query so much they want it to do too much, they want to move it one way or the other. But I mean, our NTFS extension would be on that end, trying to control security products down here on this end. And um, I didn't put anything in red, but I think probably um, commercial products that, that do like scanning on every execution or advanced threat analytics, automated remediation, those are all neat, but I kind of feel like that's out of scope for OS Query, just, just like my, my personal uh, perspective on that. I think there's probably always going to be a place for a commercial product, and a lot of times people will ask us, um, well, like, what about this attack against OS Query agent? And we think, yeah, that's all. It's still going to be there because I don't know if OS Query wants to get into the cat and mouse game of, like, signing a package and trying to run as a protected process in Windows and, um, you know, uh, being above admin. So there's, like, another layer boundary there. I don't, I mean, that's, that's a game that a lot of the commercial products play. But I don't know if open source is really the place for that. Um, and maybe doing a really great job in the middle here is, is, the, is the right uh, roadmap. I, I don't know. Um, I think uh, if we all kind of as a community decide that that would be valuable because then we could turn away some of the stuff on the other ends. Or if we want to support those other ends, maybe we should improve the like functionality that would enable it. I still have two minutes on the clock, so I have an early Q&A if there's any questions, but I also have some other slides if there's time. Have there been any like kind of queries that you guys took? You're like, yeah, it's a really good idea, but oh, it's queries never going to take it. You can't put this into a plugin. Could you just put like 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 a dark side repo? Like, well, I think that we uh, we kind of had that going. Um, doing the writable uh, table extensions was something sensitive. We weren't sure anybody was going to be interested in upstream, um, and the PR is is you know it's out there. We keep it up to date with the, you know the the main branch, but. Um, I think there might be hesitation there, so that's, I guess, a, 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 an example of something that's uh, on the edge of, you know, maybe we should do that, maybe not. Yeah. We haven't turned away any work, I don't believe, for that reason, though. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm at 90 seconds, so, um, okay, I guess I got cut off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for the applause, but these are our, like, our troubles and, and, and complaints, I guess. These are the sort of the limitations of, of, of extensions. So in all full honesty or full disclosure, um, I know it's a lot of text, so I guess uh, wait for the slides to come out. But um, we think uh, that there are some things that um, usually it's about like throughput and bandwidth uh, constraints, generally, just summing this up real quick. And uh, there's also inherent challenges in moving <coughs> things from the tabular format and out again, and especially with uh, writable tables, we have a constant um, need to get creative in order to uh, keep this state synchronized. So for instance, there's a problem where if you read the table for the firewall rules and you think, firewall number four, I want to delete that now. And then you hit you know, delete four in OS query, and meanwhile, someone on the system has already changed the rules. Now you're deleting rule four, uh, your view is old, so you're not in sync with the ground truth anymore. So there's always like, we have to like find a way to lock the state in order to synchronize it so we know that we're not the only thing editing the, the rule database. But we have to solve that and, and you know, it's a little bit different in each instance. So real quick, uh, we'd like you to develop your idea, make a pull request, and um, if you don't want to do those, uh, you can hire us. Is there our contact information?